This video is going to show you how to run an analysis of covariance or ANCOVA in SPSS. An ANCOVA is essentially when we conduct an ANOVA but we include what we call a covariate in the analysis. A covariate refers to a variable that we believe is going to influence our dependent variable in some way and we wish to remove that influence from our analysis. By doing this we'll get a clearer or cleaner effect of our independent variable on our dependent variable. So you can view it as removing nuisance variance from your analysis allowing you to see a clearer picture of your association between the independent variable and the dependent variable. So the example we're going to look through is a relatively straightforward example using a univariate ANOVA. What we've got is we're looking at the effect of smoking cessation drugs and if you look at our value labels you see we've got three experimental conditions. Our participants are given a placebo, nicotine replacement therapy or bupropion which is a antidepressant that's shown efficacy in reducing smoking and helping people quit. So what we're interested in this analysis is the effect of our experimental conditions on craving, craving for cigarettes. Higher scores in this example mean greater craving. We've also got this variable here which we've called effort. This is going to be our covariate in our analysis. Effort in this example it refers to the extent to which participants self-report putting effort into avoiding places that they'd normally buy cigarettes. The idea behind this is that participants who try really hard to avoid buying cigarettes, they should have less craving because they're exposing themselves less to the cues that are associated with their purchasing and smoking of cigarettes. So this is nuisance variance. We believe it's going to influence craving, but it's not something we're interested in. It's something that sort of exists beyond our exper experimental setup. We are interested in the effect of the drug on craving. So we want to remove this nuisance variance of the extent to which participants are exposing themselves to things that may be related to the craving. So what we'll do first is we're just going to quickly run a univariate ANOVA, which is going to explore the effect of that drug on craving. So this is as though we didn't have that, co have that covariate at all. We'll just ask for some options as well. Descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, homogeneity tests, as we do in any example. We'll also get our post-op tests as well, in case we do find a significant effect. As you can see, we've got a quality of error variance, which is good. But this is the key thing we want to look at here. Effect of the drug on craving. And as you can see, we do not have a statistically significant effect of the drug on craving. This is a non-significant result. It's nearly significant, but this is non-significant. You shouldn't be doing post-hoc tests on that. So we draw from this, we could draw the conclusion that there is no significant effect of the drug on craving. And we, we'd write this up. A univariate ANOVA revealed there's no significant effect of drug condition on craving, and we'd write our results up. We wouldn't do any post-hoc tests, and that's where we'd end it. Now, what happens, though, if we include a covariate in this analysis? So if we control for effort, well, before we do this, there's two things we've got to do first. There's two assumptions of an ANCOVA, which are actually ignored quite a lot that we should really look at, because if we violate these assumptions, we really shouldn't be running an ANCOVA. The first one is a relatively straightforward, and it's very easy to test. And this is what we call independence of the IV in the covariate. What this means is there should be no significant difference between our different experimental conditions in the amount of effort they put in. So the drug they've consumed shouldn't influence this variable. They should be independent from each other. So to test this is what we've just done to look at the effect of drug and craving. We can run a univariate ANOVA, which is test the effect that the drug condition has on effort. And we want this to be non-significant because this would mean the independent variable and our dependent variable are independent from each other. So if we run that analysis, 
So we just put f as our dependent variable. We click on OK. Look at this section here. What we can see is there's no significant effect of drug on effort. So this shows that our independent variable and our covariate are independent from each other. If this was statistically significant, you couldn't use effort as a covariate in your analysis because you're violating that assumption. It's not very common that you see this written up, but you could make the statement that a univariate ANOVA demonstrated that the IV and the covariate were independent, and you could write those statistics up, then your reader has a lot of confidence that you've done that part of the process correctly. The next thing is what's called homogeneity of regression slopes. What this refers to is simply that the association between your dependent variable and your covariate is consistent across your different experimental conditions. So let's, let's imagine I was doing an experiment and I wanted to look at the influence of different doses of alcohol, a placebo drink, a low dose of alcohol, and a high dose of alcohol on working memory. And my covariate was age. I would want it to be the same correlation between age and working memory across those three different conditions. So if you look at this graph here, this is an example of homogeneity of regression slopes. The association between age and working memory is in generally the same direction, whether it's the low dose, the placebo, or the high dose condition. Those slopes are not significantly different from each other. If they were, and this is quite an extreme example, but this is an example if we didn't have homogeneity of regression slopes. You see in this example here, we've actually got a negative association between age and working memory in the high dose and a weaker negative association between age and working memory in the low dose condition and actually a positive association between age and working memory in the placebo condition. So these regression slopes do not show homogeneity, they're not consistent with each other. So in this example, just to sort of demonstrate the regression slope arguments, what we could do Go to data, split file, and then we go to compare groups. So it splits our file into three different conditions. We click OK. And then we can just run a simple linear regression looking at the association between craving and effort. Doesn't matter what order you put these in because it's a simple linear regression. We click on OK. And this gives us because we split the files and everything three times, and we're just interested in the regression slopes. So this is the association between effort and craving in the placebo condition, in the NRT condition, and in the bupropion condition. So if we look, look at the regression slopes, first of all, they're all negative, so they're all in the same direction. Now, you can see the regression coefficients are bigger for the placebo and the bupropion condition, and a bit smaller for the NRT condition. So these two regression slopes are quite similar to each other. This, this one is, is not as steep as the other ones. So it could be that we don't actually have homogeneity regression slopes all in the same direction, but the slopes may be significantly different. However, we can formally test this in SPSS first. I'm just gonna put our data file back together again so it doesn't treat everyone as separate. And then we go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. So we set up our Univariate ANOVA with our fixed factor drug, or RIV, our dependent variables craving, and then we put our covariate here. And then we want to go to our model, and then we click Custom. This allows us to produce the interaction between drug and effort. And this is going to test homogeneity of regression slopes and essentially, we want this interaction to be non-significant. If it's significant, that's indicative of the association between our IV and our covariate being different under the different levels of our drug condition. So we click continue, we click on OK. And this gives us our interaction term here, and as you can see, it's just not statistically significant. So it's quite a close run thing, and when we looked at those regression coefficients before, it's obviously that 
the slope in the NRT condition is not as steep as the other two conditions, but this interaction is not significant. So we have met the assumption of homogeneity of regression slopes, though it's a close run thing. So we've met, we've met the two assumptions for running an ANCOVA. We've shown that we have homogeneity of regression slopes and that the IV and our covariates are independent. So now we just need to do our analysis. So you need to analyze univariates and then basically we need to set this up. We just go back to a full factorial model. This is default, so you don't need to, when you do an ANCOVA, you don't need to go into the model screen. It's completely default. We've got our options and we can ask to display means for drug, compare main effects, descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size and homogeneity tests. And then we click continue. So now this is going to run us our ANCOVA. So it's essentially it's the same output for standard univariate analysis of variance. We've got our descriptive statistics. The first thing we want to check, do we meet our assumption of equality of error variances? Yes, we do. So then we look at our analysis. Here, so I'll test it between the subjects effect. And now you see, if we look at this line here, this is the effect of drug condition on craving and as you can see now it's statistically significant in our previous example it was non-significant but once we control for the variance associated with effort we have now produced a significant association between drug and craving and we'd write this up accordingly and because it's nanco you'd make a statement that you've controlled for this other factor you'd never ignore that fact you should always state it so the reader knows exactly what you've done and indeed why your degrees of freedom have changed from a DF error of 27 to DF error of 26. And we'd write this up and ANCOVA revealed that after controlling for effort put into avoiding places where cigarettes could be purchased there was a significant effect of drug condition on craving and we'd write our statistics up accordingly. Because we've got our statistically significant effect we can look at our post hoc tests. And where do these differences lie? Well, as we can see here, here's the comparison between placebo and our NRT, nicotine replacement therapy. These do not significantly differ. Placebo, bupropion do significantly differ. So these two conditions are significantly different from each other. And our final comparison is between NRT and bupropion. And as you can see, these do not significantly differ. So the main effect in the ANOVA is largely driven by the placebo pupropion difference. And we can see if we look at our table of estimated marginal means that the difference is caused by lower craving in the bupropion condition compared to the placebo condition. And we could write up these post hoc tests accordingly. So we'd add Planned comparisons revealed the craving was significantly lower in the bupropion condition compared to the placebo condition. However, there is no significant difference between NRT and placebo or the NRT and bupropion conditions. One thing to point out, you'll notice these estimates, these means given here, these differ from those not a lot, but as you can see, so the mean for bupropion, 3.31, here it's 3.20, and also the mean for NRT is different here, 4.25, 4.410. So it's having a small effect. It is worth bearing in mind, of course, that if you look at our two write-ups, so there's univariate ANOVA and our ANCOVA, the univariate ANOVA, we've got a p-value of 0 0.058. For our ANCOVA, we've got a p-value of 0 0.032. There's actually not a lot of difference between these two these two things at all. If you look at in terms of effect size, it's a difference between a partial letter squared 0 0.19 to 0 0.23. So we're not talking about huge changes here. We're not talking about a huge impact. We're not talking about the drastic change in the model, but we're talking about a change from what we call statistically significant and statistically non-significant in our two models. So you should be careful about overblowing these effects and particularly the impact of this covariate. 
when you would make any conclusions about the study. But as you can see, the inclusion of covariates can, can have a notable influence on your results.